everyone. This is three questions with Dan Jackson. Dan Jackson from Sydney, Australia. Hey, everyone. Actually, uh, I'm with Dan Jackson. You're in Sydney, correct? You're just outside of Sydney, correct? Yeah, yeah. I live just in the Blue Mountains, the beautiful part of Sydney. Yeah. And like, I actually, I've been to Australia several times. And so I'm looking at those plants behind you. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm like terrified there's going to be like a giant spider that comes out because that's like, right? <laughs> right. That's kind of a thing. Spiders are the least of my worries. It's more snakes. <laughs> I guess, right? Hey, so Dan, thanks for thanks for um, being on the podcast today. I'm glad you could join me. And you're up super early to do this. And I'm just, you know, kind of lazily doing this in the afternoon. So I really appreciate uh, you're, you, you coming from the future to actually uh, do this. So we're going to ask you the first question. Um, and, and you actually just have a new book out and we'll talk more about it in our other podcast called Work Less, Teach More. And so I'm really excited to kind of dive into this. But when you think about teachers that you've had um, in your career, either as a student, you know, as a colleague, like who is someone that you think of that, you know, really made an impact on you and, and why? Yeah, I had a teacher in year five uh, called Helen Rivers and she... She is probably one of the people who inspired me a lot. It was kind of the year that I decided that learning was something that I could actually do uh, properly and do well. And she, she was just super creative. Like I just remember going into my classroom. I mean, at one point we built this huge tunnel that took you into the classroom. So you'd open the door and you'd have to walk through this paper mache tunnel thing that went all the way into the classroom. I can't, I can't remember what it was for anymore. It was like we were doing something that had to do with caves or something. Uh, and we did that. And I remember doing how the government worked and she set us all up as, you know, the, how parliament worked. And we had mm. one side here and one side there and we would debate and we would actually run stuff. So like we would have someone who was running lunchtime activities and they were the minister of lunchtimes and someone who was <laughs> That's the of, you know, the, the cleanliness of the room and all that kind of stuff. And you could complain to the minister, the minister if you were on the opposition side. And it was just, it was really cool to just be in a classroom where, there was lots of engaging, fun things, but also at the same time you were learning a, a lot. And so, yeah, and she she actually was a good friend because my parents taught at the same school. And so I knew where she lived. She lived, didn't live too far from me. And at one point we used to even drive her to school. But she um, she has a memory of, of something that I, I don't really remember doing, but she remembers me uh, doing this doing this play acting thing out the front uh, and I, I needed to break down a door to get to something to someone and so we had to come up with ways of how you could get through the door and someone came to the room that was like in kindergarten or something to deliver the message from the office and I picked the kid up and used him as a battering with him <laughs> to break down the door and she loves telling the story and I just think <laughs> she's the kind of teacher who allowed that to happen you know and saw it as a positive thing not as something where we had to go oh don't touch the little kid I mean obviously there was some kind of conversation that happened as well but right. um, she just was <laughs> She was an amazing teacher, uh, and I really, really benefited a lot from from being in her classroom. What, is she is she still around? Do you, have you do you, have you talked to her in the past little while or no? Yeah, actually, she lives now in the Blue Mountains. <laughs> so oh, really? Not... So she lives in St. Mary's. Okay. So what is what is her name again? What was it? Her name's Helen Rivers. Helen Rivers. If you are listening, Dan Jackson gave you a shout out. There you go. A shout out button. So and it's it's interesting because I actually remember some of the, you know, the really creative opportunities that we had as kids uh, in education. Uh, there was actually um, one time we we actually made a commercial and we were it, like and we did. I was really into basketball and we actually like set up like a trampoline, but it was out of the shot and we like were uh, selling these shoes and stuff like that. And it's funny because uh, I think about that a lot. The amount of time that it took us to make that video was like three days. And we I could probably do it in like 10 minutes on my phone right now. Right. And it was just kind of interesting to to like see like there's actually more opportunities, I think, to be creative than there ever was because a lot of the barriers, you know, with technology have kind of been eliminated. But you know, we had to have like the double VCR tape, the giant camcorder, you know, add in audio after. It's just it's just kind of crazy to think about that. And so I know that you, um, you're actually right after this podcast, you're working with a, a group of educators. So when you think about the administrators uh, in your life, whether it is as a student, as a colleague, I know that um, you were you were a deputy principal. I think you're on a sabbatical right now. And for um, my North American listeners, who's probably the majority of people listening to this right now, deputy principal is kind of like uh, the equivalent of vice principal. 
Um, who's an administrator that inspired you and why? Yeah, I think probably my most recent principal, to be honest, her name's Kate O'Donnell. And she, she that school, I, I joined that school. She hired me and we were part of the, a founding we founded the school. So she started the year before doing a lot of other stuff. But when we actually had students arrive, I got to join her with two other teachers to to start the school up. And just as an administrator, she, I think I grew in my couple of years that I was under her, I grew so much as a teacher just because she really lived the idea of uh, you know, treating teachers as professionals and giving them autonomy. You know, I was allowed to manage my classroom however I liked. If I came up with a new idea of how I wanted to do something, she would just support it and then help me to implement it uh, and allow me to reflect on things. And she really, uh, yeah, she was, she was just amazing in how she could do that. And she encouraged us all to make sure that we, you know, started work at eight o'clock and finished work at four. And you know, she was just really all over the idea of looking after us as teachers and not allowing us to get, you know, be working those extreme hours right. that come with a lot of teaching. And, but I found that while I was doing that with her, I just, I learned a massive amount as a teacher because she herself just lived it. Like she would come and teach all the math lessons, even though like she was trained in maths. So, but she would come and teach all of our senior math classes for us. And it was just an amazing opportunity, I think, to really uh, learn so much from her, and particularly when there was only that many staff and to know that she was still doing, like there was no admin staff in terms of like anyone, anyone doing all of her paperwork. Like she did everything uh, that was required oh, wow. and I just the amount of work that she was doing but then she was still saying no oh, no you don't do it I'll do it and you're like no, but you're already massively busy like right. and I think just she managed to create a culture where every teacher at that school would be more than willing to do above and beyond what they were asked to do just because she that we knew that she was looking after us that she had our best interest right. at her heart right. uh, and that she would step in any time that was needed to look after us. And so, yeah, you, you'd do anything really to, to help her out or to help the school out, which was just an amazing thing. Like I've been in lots of schools where uh, principals are trying to set up a culture like that, but they constantly fail and, you know, they fail right. sometimes because there's teachers that do the wrong thing and then they start to implement these rules that are for all the teachers. <laughs> and you're like, right, but right. most of us aren't doing the wrong thing. It's just, <laughs> it's just this right. one. And we're suffering. But, yeah, she's just... She's been amazing. She's by far. The you know, and obviously you still connect with her quite a bit, I'm assuming, correct? Say that again. You, you still connect with her quite a bit, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, she actually wrote, wrote the forward for, for the book. Oh, that's and, awesome. uh, yeah. And I, I chat to her uh, as often as we're allowed to. <laughs> right. Well, hey. You know, it's, we, we, we are both working and through everything else, but. Yeah, I think I catch up with her every couple of months, which is great. Well, Kate O'Donnell, I'm sure that everyone's wishing you were their admin right now, just based on Dan's description. So a little shout out here for you. So the, the amazing thing, um, the one thing that you said that really resonated is that fact that building that relationships and, you know, really kind of taking care of people, then those people actually did more, right? Like they did more for people. And I don't think, you know, kind of listening to this, I don't think they went to a point where they're you know, jeopardizing their own mental and, you know, physical health for that point. But I think a lot of times, you know, you talk about that notion of the speed of trust, how we actually connect with people. And really, you know, when people feel value, not just they are value, but they feel value, they tend to go much further and do incredible things. So I, I absolutely love that. I, and I like, I know, I know, based on emails I've received about this podcast, so many people just listen to what you said. And like, I wish that was you know, I wish that was someone I worked for. So uh, that awesome, awesome. I love, I love that. Um, so last question, it, and you think about, you know, your experience in education, you're an author, just released a new book, you've, you know, taught uh, different levels, you actually, you know, been an administrator, when you go back to your first year of teaching, and you could go talk to yourself, you know, what advice would you give? I would probably tell myself that you're actually in this for the long haul. Uh, right. I, feel like I went into teaching because I, this will sound very strange to a lot of American uh, teachers out there, but I went into teaching because I was poor. <laughs> right. I was I was it working. That's not strange, right? I was I was studying and I was working, but my work was not making much money at the time, and so I really? I knew that if I did like casual teaching would pay four hundred dollars a day. Uh, where in Sydney where we are, and so I enrolled in my teaching degree so that I could do casual teaching, uh, and just landed in a part time job straight away, but. I was always there 
my first three years, I was like, I'm, I'm not really here permanently. Like I, I'm just here for the money at the moment. It's a job <laughs> while I'm ready to go and do something else. Uh, and it wasn't until like four years later where I decided well, I'm not going to go and do that other thing. I am actually going to stay in education. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so I feel like I just wasted those first few years in terms of, you know, my professional growth and mm. uh, the commitment that I had to what I was doing. And so, yeah, any kid who had me in the first three years, yeah, some of some of what I've delivered probably wasn't the best, <laughs> but right. you know, I would I would just go back and tell myself, you know, yeah, do this properly uh, long term. So maybe commit to it a bit earlier, and because yeah, once I committed and I started doing my own learning and uh, getting into professional development, reading books and networking with people, uh, I really like I loved it. Like, I, and I I did fall in love with with education, but and with teaching. But yeah, but those first years that, and I would also tell myself. Uh, because I was 21 when I started teaching, I would tell myself that you know your, your students are not your friends. Right. <laughs> so as a high school teacher, they're, they're like three years younger than me, and they're right. like, "You want?" I did it, but they would be like, "Oh, you want to come to the club, sir? We're going here this weekend." I'm like, oh, no, no." But in my general conversations with them, I think I was a lot more relaxed than I probably should have been. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I, I think you know, I, I think there's that kind of. Um, like you know it's important to build relationships as you talk to you know um about how we do stuff but there always there also is that um you know professional boundary that's that's important too and i think you know it's i think it's beneficial i think i feel i feel like you're kind of like a, a secret plug for the australian education agency or something like that you're trying to like recruit teachers like hey you know get treated amazing by administrators get paid good money right so i feel like you're trying to still teachers right now uh, from yes. North America, so any, any good teachers in the states are welcome to come. Maybe <laughs> just have to put up with our our laws. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, hey Dan, thanks for thanks for uh, you know taking the time to be you know and getting up early. Um, you know before you have to do some other work today. So I really appreciate it. I know a lot of people are going to be interested uh, in your in your book, Work Less, Teach More. Uh, just even like the title right there is probably one of the best selling titles for education right now. Um, but I think that's uh, really powerful. So Dan, thank you so much. I look forward to talking to more everyone. Thanks for taking the time to listen. 